this is it you guys you made it to the last video of this course in this last video we're going to see how to set fit the zoom shot and also we're going to see how to make sure that our zoom shot is working properly within the 3d space in maya so let's jump into maya and see how to do that go into the perspective view select the grouped camera and then go into the layer editor and click on create new layer and assign selected objects. Double click on this new layer. Let's call this render cam. Let's select some color that we'll be able to see. This time it's going to be this bright red and it'll be easy for me to see the bright red on the footage. I'm gonna turn off the grid display on the camera view and I'm going to make sure that I am on the first frame. I'm going to select the camera. I wanna make sure that the timeline is set up to the whole sequence so if I go into window and it seems that Maya 2017 remembers the last settings which was 82 so if I go to windows animation editors and I got the graph editor for the camera I see that I'm missing a whole section of my timeline and the animation for the camera so I can take my timeline and just move it in the graph editor to the last frame which is frame 116. Now this is great so now that we worked with the graph editor we can just close this window and going into the perspective I'm going to create a brand new cube I'm going to select the PF data grouped camera and if you remember we set up the scene orientation to this tracker over here so that's going to be a breeze because I'm going to take this group holding V on the keyboard and I'm going to snap it to this vertex right here. Now it's hard to see the cube itself so I'm going to select the cube and I'm going to put it on its own display layer by clicking on this button again, double click on the layer. This time we're going to give it a yellow color and this is going to be for set underscore fit underscore Geo, so I know that all my set fit geometry is going into this specific layer and we can now take the cubes pivot point holding D on the keyboard and V and snap it to the exact same vertex on which the PF data grouped camera sits. So going back to that group and now we can start with the rotations around the Y to match that and around the X taking a look again at our position here maybe a little bit around the Z as well but not much let's take a look again and we can switch back to the cube and take our scale tool and start scaling it to this side I see that we need to definitely rotate it around the Z a bit more so going back to the rotation tool and selecting the grouped camera again we're gonna have to rotate a bit on the Z and the next thing we can do is start modeling based on what we see in the footage start modeling part of those pillars those wooden pillars so selecting the group right click face selecting the top one and then the extrude taking the move tool pushing it up and while that face is still highlighted we can take the scale tool and scale it down so we start to model based on that area. It'd also be a good idea to take the cube, go to display, and under the polygons, turn off the back face culling. So we don't get confused with those edges that we have in the back. Now we can take our timeline and start pushing it back to see if that cube stays put to the footage, and it is. And that is because our zoom changes so we can go back here and if we just take a look at the camera by itself and if I play the animation now you'll see how the distance changes and it shortens up the distance between the center of the lens or the lens itself to the simulated CG film gate and that's what it's all about this is a zoom is about changing the relation between the center of the lens and the film gate and that relation is measured in millimeters so our zoom is working pretty well 
we got no issue with the zoom itself so you can go ahead and continue modeling the rest of the porch itself the railings and those wooden pillars congratulations you made it through this starter course for pf track in which we saw how to deal with a nodal pen shot and a zoom shot i hope you enjoy this course and continue forward to see the rest of the courses that we have on vfxtutor.com i'm michael rafaelovich and you've been vfx tutored